Hi and welcome to the Reflex level editing walkthrough. I'll just be showing some of the functionality that is in the real-time level editing tools that uh, we use to make the levels for the game and it's going to be shared amongst the community. It's just going to come standard with the game. Okay, so what we're looking at at the moment is what you see when you first load Reflex. Um, Tilde key brings down the console. Um, then we can load the empty level, which is the default. Basic level to start from, all it's got in it is... Well, default key for editing is zero. Toggles edit mode. And back to play mode. As you can imagine, this allows for quick iterations and... Yeah. Okay, so that's all that's in the empty level. We'll start by saving this as a new level lighting that back up so that we're in that one rather than the empty one so this is our own version of the empty level um, we can now toggle edit this is the player spawn that we started from click to drag these around hold alt and click to drag up and down move around using your standard movement keys. This is the property window, which can be brought up again with N. Click to select something, escape to deselect. You can bring up the properties while something of the level is selected, like the brushes. Um, you get the world spawn level properties. This allows you to do things like change the sky color. If we were to bake lighting at this point, the light emitting into the level from the ambient sky color would be yellow pouring into the map. Just go for a nice subtle blue. Now let's actually start creating some geometry. Click and drag to create a brush. Hold shift while hovering over a face and move in that direction to make the brush grow in that direction and resize it easily. Make this a little bit thicker. There is no limitation or rather requirement that you have your level sealed If we were to leave this completely open, we can jump out of it. So that's your own fault. Make sure your levels are sealed. We're going to be imposing as few limitations on people as possible. So the dimensions of the brushes are visible within the world. This is dragged around just like the player entity. We can change the grid snap distance at the moment it is set to 16. We'll set it to 8, which is a nice step height. So 8 by 16. Pressing G will duplicate an object in towards the direction of your camera, so we're up and back slightly, it will duplicate by the snap distance towards you. So you quickly do things like this. Undo is Z, redo is X. These are all default keys that um, are configurable in the config files. Save map is very important. As you can see here, I've actually got that bound to space so that I can tap space with my thumb. Just going to duplicate these to quickly make some steps. Can make a platform here. And player is about 56 units high. 
We want a nice clean gap to be able to go underneath these stairs and see that this room isn't large enough. Make it a bit larger. Make a bit of an overhang. So it's all nice and solid. A lot of what helps the feel of the environments is that solid feeling. So making sure that you know, things are 32 units at least thick is generally a good rule of thumb. All right, that's all flush, it's nice. Now we've got this at 96 units. Um, we need to move it back a bit, make some more steps. This texture set is currently a placeholder texture set. Um, quite a few people are liking the look of it, so we're actually uh, in discussions about coming up with a specific style that is a minimalistic kind of theme. Um, that is not necessarily the gothic, industrial or sci-fi themes that we have um, pictures of available up at the moment. Some really thin stairs. We don't have to, I'm just um, showing some of the things that are possible. Oh, come on, be nice. So now I've got these kind of cool, interesting steps that have gaps through them. They can shoot through. We can fit inside them and we can trick jump off them. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Um, might be cool to put something to jump to over there. So let's change grid setting back to something more realistic, more sensible rather. with a straight jump and with a strafe jump making it a little bit easier double jump a bit quicker all right now as you can see my weapon is black and the lighting looks fairly dull if we were to light this right now like bake, bake the lighting um, weapon would light up and this would be fairly bright it'd be getting all the ambient from the sky um, so to just demonstrate what sort of lighting to be able to expect. Whoops, I dragged in empty space. It will try and create brushes from where you are clicking. So you can click on surfaces to create them quickly. So if I was, you know, wanting some boxes, that's all very quick to do. Okay. Oh yeah, 32 units high, sure. There you go, actually I want that a bit higher. So I can double jump up onto it. That's not reachable, so maybe we want... That can be the trick jump way. That can be the hard way that's longer just very quick to make iterations. Okay, so I think this ceiling's a little bit low. Let's just move that out of the way for a sec. Later on when we do have the actual art themes in place, the grid will be a toggleable overlay, so you will see it over the top. The grid is super handy for being able to um, Obviously make sure these measurements all match up and stuff so you can figure out things like step heights, ledge heights, gaps and distances quickly, like you know, I can quickly see that's 192 units. Easy. 64 unit chunks, 32, 16, very quick. There's a few different ways to light um, things in Reflex. Um, the sky ambient is cool because it it's a natural light source um, 
it will create area lighting that's ambient and pours into the level realistically. The reflex lighting solution is radiosity based, so we have surfaces that can emit light, such as lava or uh, materials, just um, basic materials like neons and all those sorts of things, um, as well as lights on effect models that can be placed and those cast real-time lights and shadows so those can actually be used for cool gameplay elements. Alright, so what we're going to do is just make, I'll make a platform here, I've decided I want this to go up higher, so we can create a room up there, okay, actually I want a wall over here. Okay, and intersect, I'm just a bit of a perfectionist. Cool, so that's getting, getting kind of interesting. Make that come back to there. Duplicate this up. And that can be our ceiling for the top level, actually. This is being all sealed in, it might be dark, I'd like to have some, some light coming in. See that's gap is probably big enough for players to be able to fit in, so that's kind of bad, so we'll just bring that up. Now there, should be a nice window. Um, let's duplicate this across. I want some light coming into the level, not a ridiculous amount. I want to be able to show some of the cool angles and stuff and bounce of how light comes in and pours around. So we can do a quick lighting test, which will show hopefully the skylight comes in here, comes down and lights this area, although you start to quickly learn what's going to work and what isn't. So I, I suspect there won't be enough light bouncing into this lower area, so we're gonna have to um, add some lights in. It's okay, we can do that. Um, so let's just take a quick look at that lighting. R underscore LLM underscore build. We'll start building a light map. You can move around in real time while baking the light map. It is all done on the GPU and it is like everything else, really first pass, it's gonna get quicker, it's gonna get a lot quicker. So as expected, this area is dark. It's calculating all the bounces. Right, so that um, actually went a lot slower because of the um, capture software I'm using is using the GPU, so a bit of a fight. Okay, um, I want, I decided I actually want less skylight coming in from over here to create more contrast and more defined shadows. So as soon as I've edited something that's going to invalidate the light map, the lighting just gets completely reset. Um, I can actually undo that change <laughs> Actually, no, we'll go with that narrow. Okay. So now I would like. I'd actually like this as a feature wall, but only in the top part. Um, all these level editing tools are going to get a lot better. This is the first pass, as I was saying, with other things. Um, it's going to get better. You will be able to do things a lot quicker. But already we're finding that it's pretty quick and we've got people making their first levels. Um, people that have not been making levels 
ever for any other game, which is really cool. So we've actually got a separate tool that is the um, content browser at the moment. I won't bother showing it. It's just, it's a separate app. Um, we're most likely going to keep it as a separate app so that um, you can put it on a second monitor or, you know, off to the side that's not not impeding in your view, in the viewport and blocking things. Um, all it basically does is just spit across path names and things like that um, into Reflex. So you'll be able to see that the commands that it's actually putting into the console for me. I'm just looking for uh, one of the developer textures. I would like a, I'm thinking orange visual. Send that across. The M key. The M key assigns materials. K key picks materials. So if I was to hold shift for face modify mode, go K, I can grab the um, texture from that individual face or just press K and we'll grab it from the entire brush. Select over here, we can see that you know, there's all different different faces, they're all set to the same because I just pressed M, but we can actually go Shift M to assign to an individual face and as you can see the other faces are still left. So now, if we're backlighting, We can see how the light's going to be playing with that. This is just the first bounce. Or the first pass, sorry. Once it gets to the next bounce, we'll see some of this light bouncing off this wall. And it's pretty subtle because it's just a subtle ambient, but we're getting some orange on that floor. We'll place a real-time light projecting onto this wall soon and we'll be able to see that that light bounce will actually fill this area and make it more orange and things like that. In the middle of a light bake and I wanted to cancel it because I didn't want to wait for it so at the moment you can just you know commence editing and it will automatically cancel. Alright so I'm thinking that ledge is a little bit too small. I wanted something that was more like the opposing side, so I'll just quickly grab that. There is no multi-select at the moment. Um, that is something that we will be adding. It's just not done yet until it's the first pass. And I decided I wanna, I wanna put a little lava pool in here. I think it'd be a good source of light. And obviously hazard like that could be could be any light projecting surface really the material rather so we'll bring this across okay cool all right now create the lava surface like any other brush and I will grab Love and Material from the content browser, assign that. Um, as you can see there's yellow and orange and all of this lava effect is really placeholder. The yellow, orange and red sort of effects that come through it, everyone will get a slightly different light bake, it's kind of cool because you do get all those colour variations going through the bake so we will get, you know, different tones of lighting projecting off that texture up onto the wall. Um, right, I think I want some little pillars here. Create ourselves a little, little window sort of area. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Someone could 
trick jump straight up into that. So, right now, vertex editing, press V, and you'll toggle vertex editing. Press it again, it goes off. Hold Alt, dragging those down. It's done just like anything else. So, that's just dragging around, that's holding Alt. Go to the corner, G to duplicate. Okay, actually, I don't want this corner vert there. Hover over it, press backspace. Backspace will delete that currently selected vertex. So it's pretty quick to be able to create interesting shaped objects and test how they behave with physics. pretty cool. So we'll actually see how this light is interacting. Well first actually let's make some different materials for the floor surfaces. Um, so just grabbing another material from the content browser. So ME act underscore active material and then the path name, you know, if you want to type it by hand or bind it to a key for your favorite materials, then that's easy to do. So shift M, assigning to those faces. If I was to clone the brush from the first one, like I was to do the material first, then clone the brush, then um, I wouldn't have to do this for every single step and just duplicate, duplicate that properly. kind of a key little trick jump thing so maybe we'll make this a different color um, it's gonna be near the lava so I don't really want to make it red and not too different to the tones we'll be using so orange might work that works those floors have those textures now I've just been using the orange one so now everything I do will be orange, but I actually want to do the floor up here so I can shift K, pick off that brush, shift M, assigned. It's that easy. Next up we'll create a teleporter. Creating the visual first, which is an effect. Again, I'll just use the content browser to paste in the path here. Uh, where am I looking? So now I've got this portal effect placed. This is purely the visual. It will project its lighting into the light bank as well. Uh, so effects can come with their own lights and particle effects. As you can see, there's the particles being sucked in. Um, so let's make this window a little bit, a little bit more open. Okay, now to create the trigger brush that is actually for the teleporter itself, uh, for the actual behavior. Made just like any other brush. Go, yep, that's cool. Set its target to uh, TP for teleporter. We'll make that TP1. To make a two-way teleporter is just making two one-way teleporters. There's no magic trick there. Now we want to create a target. 
and get it placed here. It gets, currently gets placed halfway through the floor, it's just the way that target model is set up. Type in the angles manually for now, that will get easier as well. And press N to bring up the properties for it and set its target. Toggle play mode. And we can see we just went through that teleporter. We just duplicate that brush. Bring it up here. Selecting teleporters is a little trickier than I'm actually gonna. Show that again because it needs to face the other way anyway. Negative 90 degrees and then pass from the content browser again. Right, so we've got that one that goes. It's going to need to go to the next target, which is teleport 2, to make it go the other way. And go, actually, we've got a target up here, so let's duplicate that one. the other way and this is the for teleport 2 so that one goes up here and then the other one should go back there nope <laughs> uh, because I've duplicated it off that other brush um, it uses the same one, so you can actually, uh, you, points of the same target, it is actually considered the same entity. Um, this is cool for creating teleporters of all sorts of, you know, weird shapes and stuff, and they're all part of the same group. Um, so, in this case at the moment, to create a unique one, I just need to make one from scratch. No big deal. Quick to do. Teleport 2. Takes us downstairs. That should take us up. Good. Sweet. All right. Now's a good time to probably, with those uh, teleporters placed and they'll be emitting light, to actually, uh, well, obviously not forget to save map, but to also build lighting. Now we can see immediately down here, just based on the um, direct light alone, that we're getting a lot of cool light from that lava. It being a surface uh, surface light type, the surface area of that brush will completely dictate how much lighting is in the area. If I was to make this smaller, obviously we get less light. It's a very cool way to actually um, get a lot of fill lighting in areas. I'm getting a little bit of light from that teleporter. So we've got teleporter light with the lava light. Small artifact. Artifacts here and here. You can work around them, but those are just bugs that are going to be fixed. All first pass. So we've got our light coming in here. That's cool. Happy with that. I think it could be a bit brighter down here, so let's place some real time lights. Create an effect.
Naturally that's going to invalidate the lighting. Just going across the content browser. Picked a light that's like a cool kind of small and intense spotlight. I want it a bit closer to the wall. So we'll adjust the snap distance from 16 to about eight. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Duplicate that. Getting some interesting lighting. Change my create type back to world spawn because I want to go back to creating brushes. So now, we can actually see that the lights are projecting real-time shadows. Pretty thin brush, that's... So this can be used for gameplay elements because the uh, players cast shadows as well. Place one there, get some light coming through there. Alright, so maybe we can place another one over here. But this was getting lit a fair bit from the lava, so um, actually don't think we'll need that one. I think this, these two will brighten up the area enough. And less is more. Getting a nice contrast with the lighting, getting the highlights of the um, direct lighting there will be cool. Um, might be nice. Let's play some up here. Um, things like light properties such as um, the intensity, uh, the near and the far attenuation and things like that are all going to be configurable uh, on a per light basis so you know it will be possible to stretch these out so that you get, get the kind of highlights you'd expect if you'd want on that wall. Now we can actually duplicate this across over here. Decided Actually, I want to change this to a floodlight. So I think it'd be cool to get a light hitting that wall over there and show some of the light bouncing around. I'm having all sorts of hardware problems with this computer. It's okay, we will press on. Okay. Oh, no, that's too much. Nope, that's the wrong direction. See where that light's casting. It's actually casting over there. We're going to make it so you can just um, point in the direction you want and have it be able to align to your camera and things like that. A bit less, so it'll actually hit more over this area, cover more of the room. All right, let's do a light break. So again, I'm free to completely move around. Yeah, 
yeah, so we've got these, these lights here, we've got the lava light, got some cool contrast, might be a bit too dark, but it's always best to wait for all the bounces to complete so that you can get a more accurate view. Good. This light up here is casting. It's actually not casting enough for what I wanted, so I'm gonna decide to seal. Actually, I don't want to seal that up. Not like that, anyway. So I don't want to duplicate that brush, and I'm gonna turn that into another surface emitting light. And the developer said we've got a whole bunch of different colors. Um, I'm just going to make this white for now because I've already got that orange feature wall. I don't want to get too crazy with uh, multicolored rainbows. Uh, just go across and find that light texture. Just got the white one for now. Um, that can be blue, like you can do CTF kind of levels. So yeah, blue, blue or red, very easy to be able to do CTF kind of levels with that stuff. Um, all right, Let's start placing some cool stuff like pickups. Actually, that's a really weird. Actually, that's a really weird spawning position. Actually, that's a really weird spawning position, so what I want to do is uh, probably do... Fuck. So I'm going to drag this spawning position around, um, changing the angles of it. No wrong angle. It's more sensible. spot for possibly an armor. Oops, we want create type pickup. Click to place it. Drag to move around, same as everything else. Um, currently we're just using indexes. Uh, this will be friendly too. So I'll create the yellow, put a yellow armor here. Pickups again come with particle effects, uh, light sources and everything. So that actually will end up getting lit. Mm. This would be cool for something like a rocket launcher. little hidey hole for something like maybe a shotgun. So this might create some cool interesting light under here. You can already see just off the real-time lighting alone without any bounces that it's getting an orange sort of light. Armor down here. Yeah that's interesting. And actually we want another another ledge, another area. So let's go world spawn. Open this up. Move these lights a bit. Actually, I'll open that up a bit more. Duplicate using the G key. It's obviously retains the floor texture. 
wonder if we can make that gap. Yep. How about just a simple jump? No, we can't. So, for gameplay purposes, making it easy for people. Shift K, Shift M. Cool, we can make that jump. Example purposes. Let's just make a quick jump pad. Obviously, in an actual level, that jump pad would be fairly useless because you can teleport up to here and then just jump across. But for educational purposes, that's fine. So just go and create a top jump pad. Better. Uh, currently the edited texture for it is visible in game because we haven't created art for these and this jump pad has no target so I need to create one of those and just grab Oop. grab a copy of the teleporter target targets a target it's not fussy Jump pad one. Um, the angles at this stage don't matter because all it's trying to do is push you into the direction so that your apex of your jump passes through the target. So now I'll just test that out. I hit this ledge, so this ledge is a bit too, a bit too much. And the target's making us go a bit too aggressively towards that. Cool, close. So we'll be a bit more generous with the spacing. And we need more. Fuel. I want even more angle. Yeah, that's easy. I'm pretty happy with that. Back to world spawn. Let's just quickly seal this up. This might be another cool area to um, actually let some more natural light in, so I won't seal it up completely. So now I've got that, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, it might be cool to bring this down a bit. Up. Just create a bit more of an interesting shape going on here. So yes, it did I'll do the vertex editing at the moment, resets materials and stuff. So we've got this kind of uh, angled shot. Looks a bit bizarre, but that's the freedom you can create whatever you want. 
no matter how bizarre. Just don't make stuff too weird because uh, then you've got to try and convince your friends to play it. Happy with that, we can jump that gap. Oh boy, it works. I think it's going to be a little bit dark in here, so I'll just grab one of these lights. Actually, I want that as a different light type. So, what have we got? We've got this one. Got this light type. That should be pretty cool for lighting up in there. You know, like if we wanted to, then another hallway down here. Later on once there's all the um, fully fledged tools we'll be able to just cut our brushes really quick. So something like that might be interesting. Maybe this would have turned out differently if I actually pre-planned this. Cool thing about um, having the quick iterations is you can just toy with ideas a lot, a lot easier. Just go. Oh, yeah, I want that. I want that to go down there. You know, and this can this can go to another room or do something weird, or I can have um, maybe a pool of lava. people who uh, mess up their jump, all sorts of stuff. And even then, create a ledge. You know, maybe put, change this to a weapon or something. And put the armor down here instead. Something that's also worth mentioning is that all this level editing is being done locally at the moment, but there is nothing stopping this from being um, done in multiplayer. I can give someone my IP and they'd be able to jump in right now and we can be both doing everything that I'm doing. Maybe the green armor. I think I need a lava. It's a bit risky. It's a bit tricky to get out of here, so... Create something for a quick exit. We go for consistency. So that's the quick level. The brown makes sure the gameplay is amazing, which it is. Course. Now we can do a light bake, seeing as we haven't done it in one in a while. See how the lighting's playing with all these new things, such as this, this light here. Floodlight angle changed. We've got the new lava pool down here. We've got this light, new area down here. You can see that this ceiling is actually getting light from the lava here. up so making subtle light into the level. A lot more noticeable down here because there's a tighter space. With the um, jump pad texture actually being visible in the game mode at the moment, um, it's going to emit light. Just a cool side effect of everything being unified in the same way. So 
We're actually getting light bouncing around from the jump pad. Got that light coming in from the sky above. Got our light down here. It's doing all of its multiple passes. Final stage. You can see that firing grenades and all sorts of objects going near the real-time lights will create shadows as you would expect. And we've got our light and shadows through the stairs. And that's it. If you guys have any questions or want to know more uh, about how to create specific things with the level editor and you currently don't have a build, um, just feel free to ask and hopefully explain all the sorts of things that are possible, but um, hopefully this gives you a quick hint into uh, some of the stuff that can be done currently. Okay, thanks.